Welcome to the Christmas edition, December 22nd, PFF forecast. It's going to be a great show. We are going to uh, do another segment this week. Um, I tried to convince Eric to do a Quibi segment. So I don't know, we'll work Quibi in some way, but we're going to do the target take of the week. Uh, we're also going to, I promise, do recommendations this week. I lied to you last week. We're not going to, not going to um, leave you guys hanging. Of course, we're going to talk the week 16 slate, figure out what the lock of the week should be and all of the best bets. Let's rock. We are wearing the same sweatshirt. I noticed that when you walked in. I don't know. I guess at least I don't have the the string. And I think I, I'm missing the end, like the, the classy mm. end to one of these. Yeah. Have you ever worn a sweatshirt and like actually used the strings? Oh, sure. Really? Growing up in Minnesota, absolutely. Oh, I guess growing up in Minnesota. I mean, like, you gotta be like, <laughs> like this is what I, this is how you watch a Vikings game. <laughs> I saw um I sent this to you yesterday, but a buddy of mine who's a Bears fan, yeah. shout out to my my guy Matt, who is a religious listener of the podcast. He sent me a screenshot of something. It was like a form for if you're um the kind of dating app. It's like I am a male, female analytics person <laughs> looking for the touch of a woman. <laughs> Vikings fan. <laughs> and then it was looking for man woman and then it said like a a, st a, a a high cliff to jump off of or something or like a car to run me over <laughs> so anyways enough with the morbid stuff um uh before we get into to everything if you are listening to the podcast and you want to buy yourself a christmas gift or you need to get a christmas gift for someone that likes football Great opportunity for you. 50% off a PFF Elite subscription, and that gives you access to all of the betting tools, the betting dashboards, the best bets tool, the player props tool, also the DFS optimizer, and of course, PFF grades for every single player, every single week, um, and all of the premium content. It's an awesome deal. It's less than $9 a month for a whole freaking year's worth of goodness. 50% um, off an Elite annual subscription with promo code ELITEUP. E L I T E U P. Just go to pff.com. It'll help you out. It'll make sure you get the promo code and everything like that. But great gift for either yourself or someone else. And if you are looking to um, uh, to buy an Edge subscription, it's a little cheaper. I still got a promo code for you. Forecast F O R E C A S T. We'll give you twenty five percent off. Uh, so if you're buying an Edge subscription, use that. All right. Um, the target take of the week. But at Tar I'm assuming it's a great time of year to go to Target, by the way. I, I don't know, verifiably, but I assume so. Um, I have one. And <sighs> I feel like this might be my most controversial take yet. But I feel pretty good about it. Pretty good about it. I'm curious what you think. Uh oh because I think you might fall out of your chair when I say this. But I think there is, I mean, be careful when I say this. Last year, Josh Allen and Patrick Holmes were the two best quarterbacks, right? Or like two of the-, the they, two, they are contemporaries in yes. the NFL. What yeah. I meant is they were like two of the best quarterbacks, young quarterbacks in the NFL. A young quarterback duo in Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert has a close to 50% chance, in my opinion, to be better than Mahomes and Josh Allen. What do you think? How crazy is that? Is that not strong enough for you? I think I kind of shocked myself with this. Joe Burrow, the highest graded quarterback in the NFL right now. Justin Herbert, I believe, is like three or four. He's been amazing. I think, I think look is that an overreaction. It's an overreaction to to recency, which admittingly is wonderful for those two guys. Mm -hmm. Burrow's been wonderful. Uh, he's not getting a lot of help mm -hmm. from Zach Taylor or his team. 
Herbert similar. I also don't think he's getting a lot of help from Joe Lombardi. Right. Josh Allen has had an interesting year. I'm actually fairly impressed with the re- how he's handled the regression. Like I think he's keeping that team afloat. Mm-hmm. And Pat, Pat's only the 14th most valuable quarterback in football this year. Like, Burrow's second. Um, Herbert's third. Like, so you look at, so again, this season, you're absolutely right. Like, those two guys, yep. second and third most valuable quarterbacks. Um, Pat, 14th. Rodgers, 10th, by the way. People can chew that, chew on that. Brady first. Um, but... Like if you look at like the, the the sum of this mm-hmm. the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I still think I'd rather have. So I think Mahomes is better than both those guys, mm-hmm. and I think and I think to make the argument valid, you need a you need to predict a fall from Josh Allen. Okay. That I don't know. I think Allen has proved to me this year he might not be worth the deal all the time, mm-hmm. but he's not a he he still. Josh Allen is going to be a pesky quarterback in this league for a long time. Okay. So at first I was offended by my own thought. I don't think you should. I mean, but let me, let me give you why I eventually uh, aligned on it. And the reason for that is this both Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Let me, let me actually start with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has had an incredibly ideal situation for a quarterback. Now, he's obviously awesome. I would take him number one out of that group as well, despite the fact that he's having a poor year. But I think the difference between him and, say, Herbert at his peak and Burrow at his peak, and I would actually go Herbert first at his peak based on what he can do physically, is not nearly what we thought it was, in large part because he has had idyllic conditions When those have slipped a little bit this year, it hasn't been nearly as good. Meanwhile, Justin Herbert, it's not like he doesn't have talent there, but that offense is nowhere near what Andy Reid's offense um, should should have been this year and has been in years past. The Bills, on the other hand, and this is, I think, an interesting one. It wasn't until last year, Josh Allen had a couple of years of really poor play before last year. You look at Herbert and burrow and both of their first two years in the league have been really impressive right really really impressive and so i actually think that that cluster that burrow and herbert can be closer to mahomes than we've we've considered for a while and that's why i think those two could be um could be the duo that like rises to the top over the course of time i think obviously you have kyler murray in there um who's a good um you know, conversation topic. I think if you wanted to go like draft class, by the way, which is what I misspoke and said at the beginning, you could look at a Lamar Allen combo, which is really interesting. Um, you could look at a Mahomes Watson. Watson combo. Mahomes Watson, if Watson isn't Watson, right, is a, I think a, a okay. So clear what about Mahomes favorite. Trubisky? I mean, Trubes is the best. Look, quarterback he was in he football. was broken by by Matt Nagy. I do think that like Trubisky is going to get a shot with the team, just because of how bad Nagy's been. <laughs> I mean, Nagy's been poor. I felt bad for him no, on Monday. No, 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 no dude, no, the no, poor no, guy no, was no. breaking. No, no, hold on, hold on. This poor man. Look, we give coaches a ton of flack on this yeah. show, and everyone in the media gives coaches a ton of flack. It's a hard freaking job. It is. There are only thirty-two people in the world that have it. You can be a nice human being and not be particularly good at being an NFL football coach. On a human level, I felt bad for Matt Nagy. See, so my issue was when I watched that game, the Bears played really hard, but not the way that the Detroit Lions play hard. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like they played hard and cheap and stupid, and that's why they lost the game. In my opinion, and again, yeah, you look at the look on his face, you're like, God, just go back to Kansas City and be the quarterback's coach, for God's sakes. Win a ring there. Who's winning a ring there? Okay. You got to beat the Steelers first. Buddy. <laughs> um, but, uh, but like, so I did, I, I sort of did, but like this team playing like the kind of football they played on Monday mm-hmm. was why the refs were like ready to freaking give out a penalty. I'm like, there was that one time where they got to stop. And this like lineman just walks up to a Vikings like guard and like pokes him in the face and like mm-hmm. walks away. Mm-hmm. You know the the one play where 
teased Tabor like dove for the bat running back and then tripped up the lineman on accident and they called like like that was bullshit like mm. I, you know that was a terrible call um so Nagy yeah I mean look at, like just like everything Nagy's not perfect and this situation is, isn't perfect either right like he didn't ask for Trubisky he also didn't do the greatest job with Trubisky mm-hmm. he didn't ask for Fields but he also is not doing a great job with Fields either so that that's kind of that that's kind of my issue. Okay, your take. <clears throat> All right, here's my take, and I just came. I just arrived at this. I'm excited for it. <clears throat> the people who oh, want buddy. to rip the Buffalo Bills for not running the ball enough or well enough are Long. are missing the point completely. The Buffalo Bills, so this is, and I'm looking at early downs in the first four quarters, or first three quarters of a game. Okay. And we chart RPOs, we chart RPOs on passes, we chart RPOs on runs. The Bills have basically like a 34% success rate on runs that aren't RPOs. And that is one of the worst marks in the league. It's not great. If you factor in RPOs, both runs and passes, so when Josh pulls the ball out and throws it to Mm Stephon Diggs, it's 44% or so. The Colts' success rate on the same run plays is 46%. And if you factor in RPOs, their success rate is lower than Buffalo's. Wow. This, this, this uh, you know, wow. renaissance team of running the ball, this team that's going to bring us back to what is good and right, back under God's light, is not even better than the Bills when you factor in RPOs properly. And, like, again... And and again, like I, I this is back to our discussion that we had last week, which was were the the analytics asked the questions the football people pose, right? Mm-hmm. This was something that was said this week. The Bills, you know, this was said over a number of different weeks, but the reason the Bills are struggling is because they're not running the football, they're not physical, they're not tough, all this kind of stuff. Yep. And like it just simply doesn't add up. They're not winning because they have some injuries on defense to key players. And Josh Allen has not been as good as he was last year. And they've faced a really hard schedule so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not a really hard schedule, but they've, they've faced some tough teams like the Colts and the Patriots and, you know, stuff like that. And they've lost to them. Mm-hmm. Bucks. It's no, it's no more complicated than that. What's also interesting is that, so you look at the, Col- the Colts versus Bills conversation, I think is really interesting because they're like polar opposite teams, right? Like Carson Wentz, you watch him drop back to play quarterback and you're like, please God, just run the ball. Yeah. (laughs) And you watch the Bills and every time they run the ball, you're like, why are you not just letting Josh Allen throw the ball? Like he's really good at it. And, um, you know, both of them have strengths and weaknesses on defense. I actually think both their defenses are pretty good. And the Bills, unfortunately, are without Tredavious White. And that's a big loss. But which team is better? Uh, If they were playing a neutral field, who would be favored? bills the bills the bills have a passing game that right now is underperforming right josh allen is playing way worse than last year the colts have like the greatest run game the world has ever seen and a quarterback that can't put together a peanut butter and jelly sandwich much less complete a football pass in a crucial well and, 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 and 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 that's the point i think which is for you to be as good as a team that is underachieving in the passing game or even close to as good as that team and not even as good as that team, everything has to go yeah. right for you from a running game perspective. Everything. Yeah. You have to have an incredible player in Jonathan Taylor. You have to have an incredible uh, scheme, an awesome and healthy offensive line. All of these things have to come together. And you look at the Bills and you go, yeah, actually a lot of shit can go wrong and they're still going to be pretty good because they're passing. And they win good. this week. They're an 80% to win the a- and the AFC East for the second straight year, the third and be in the playoffs for the third consecutive year. You're absolutely right. And I think that this is part of the discussion that no one talks about. They're like, again, and we like Frank Reich. The, the issue with Frank Reich is he's... He, he's the, let me tell you the issue with Frank Reich. He has to start Carson Wentz. Yeah, that he's never gotten a fair shake at the position. <laughs> he got he got Andrew Luck for one year, yep. and they start one and five, they finish 11 and five, and or, or 10 and six maybe. Yep. And they win a playoff game, and like things are looking up. Then he's got to start Jacoby Brissett because Andrew Luck retired. 
Then he's got to start Phillip Rivers because mm -hmm. that was really their best option. Then he's got to start Carson Wentz yep. because that's – like they're never bad enough where they can draft a quarterback in the top five. Yep. So they have to deal with Carson Wentz-like players. I think one of the 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 so trying to trying to bridge the gap here. One of the mess one of the messages that doesn't get out is when we're talking about what wins football games, sometimes we we forget to mention we're talking about okay, if you're starting from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're starting from a position of strength, like a la the Bills, a la the Chiefs, a mm -hmm. la the Chargers or the Bucks. If you have an elite quarterback, you're a you're 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 losing if you're if you're going to turn around and try to be a power running team. Mm -hmm. But if you are a team like the Titans, who Derrick Henry, you get him by the way, first overall, no, second round pick, mm -hmm. and you get Tannehill, who's like a good, not great quarterback, then okay, like sure, the the local maximum for you is maybe being more like the Titans that that yep. the Titans are. If you're the Colts and you've never had a great quarterback and you and you somehow got into a position to take Quentin Nelson and Braden Smith and Ryan Kelly and stuff and you end up with Jonathan Taylor taken first overall, no second round pick, then and he ends up being as good as you thought he was, then yeah, sure, have it that way. But two things. A, none of those teams ever win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like True. none of like it's not the global maximum. It might be a local maximum for you. But it's not a global maximum. And secondly, we're not like that working for a team given their circumstances is not global. It doesn't mean that every team should try to be the Colts. It means if you are given the shit sandwich that the Colts are given, do that and and be better and understand the limitations thereof. I cosign. I have another take, by the way. Uh -oh. We're extend extending the segment. Uh oh. Is this I, establishing the take now? Is this a body blow? I'm re yeah, really okay. trying to break them down. It started out as just a quibby of a take, and now it's really getting strong. I like it. Uh, I was looking because Jalen Hurts played um, a valiant game last night. The fumble wasn't great. He got an unlucky interception. But if you look at his box score stats, which a lot of people do, uh, they will go, ugh, yikes. Like, you know, 14 to 9 touchdown interception ratio. You look at Carson Wentz. You go, oh yeah, he's been great. And this is why, like, this is why I would buy a PFF subscription. So I can see this nonsense and like actually interpret it and define it. Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback and a better passer than Carson Wentz is and has been this year. And people will get angry at that because Jalen Hurts is not a traditional passing quarterback. And to seems you coded to me. Yeah, to you, I would like to say go fuck yourself. Yeah, it seems coded. <laughs> um and uh, the facts are the facts. And the Eagles took flack, and Kevin Cole wrote a great article on PFF.com about the Jalen Hurts pick. He got a lot of flack for taking Jalen Hurts when they had Carson Wentz. It was a great pick. Dare I say, potentially a franchise-defining pick for the next 10, 15 years. And there's a chance that it isn't, and that's okay too. That's the whole point of that pick. It gave them flexibility. It gave them flexibility to get rid of Carson Wentz, who stinks. It gave them flexibility to play Jalen Hurts, to draft a Devontae Smith, to see Jalen Hurts mature, and to make a call on Jalen Hurts after getting information about him. And oh, by the way, the guy that isn't good at throwing the football has the 16th best PFF passing grade. Actually, sorry, 15th best PFF passing grade this year. Has a big-time throw rate of nearly 6%. Carson Wentz, remember, touchdown interception ratio, which is complete bullshit. Carson Wentz's is below 4%. So before you come at, you know, the Eagles and say, oh, Jalen Hurts can't throw the ball, look at these stats, go actually, you know, watch how he's played the game of football. He has made some really nice throws. Yeah, he's not Tom Brady. He's not Joe Burrow. He's not, um, he's not Dak Prescott either. But this is only his second year playing in the NFL. And I would be pretty damn encouraged about that. So here's a question that I have for you then, because I agree with everything you've just said. Mm -hmm. Hertz has half a win more above replacement than Wentz. So I think the numbers bear out what you're saying. If you are the Philadelphia Eagles, you have two more years left and presumably two years of a franchise tag yep. um, for, for Hertz. You have three first round picks this year. Do you go in on those first round picks? Mm-hmm. At, to, to support Hertz mm. fully, yep. 
knowing farewell that like, you know, the, given the success rate at the position, given, you know, how things, um, you know, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. you know, can go, or do you hedge a little bit and trade back out of one of those first round picks and give yourself some ammunition in case yeah. it weren't to, it wasn't to work out because we've, we've seen this happen, this song and dance happen before. And again, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that Hertz this, isn't going to work out. I'm saying, yeah. Like if you go, like let's say you go no, lineman, lineman, wide receiver, or lineman, running back, line, whatever, and you you get stuck, and then hurt stinks, and then you're like, oh god, I got three guys who if they, it's like Cleveland, if well, they all work the, out. By the same token, what if Hurts is pretty good? And that's you what go, I'm saying. And yeah. you go, well, is it because yeah. of that group? Because you do get the cost control with it. If Hurts is good enough to earn a second contract, then those three first round picks are all cost control for the second half. Yeah. Of that issue, so it, it and it's a good question. And you cost control hurts now, and you say, "Let me build the best roster around him mm -hmm. to try and win a Super Bowl." This is a rational versus reasonable conversation. That, that's what I've decided. These are okay. You can't expect humans to be perfectly rational in all of these situations. You can only hope that they're reasonable. <laughs> and I think what I would be hoping for with the Eagles is that they're reasonable. I think it's reasonable to look down the line a little bit and say, I have a ton of draft capital this year. Do I want to extend that and have those and have optionality further down the road? Right? I think that's a reasonable take. But it's also reasonable to say, I like three players in the first round this year that can make an immediate contribution or a very soon contribution to this team and i have a cost controlled quarterback and i'm going all in mm -hmm. it, not in a way that the rams are going all in but yeah. like going all in in the right way from a team building perspective i also think that's reasonable even if it's not quite as rational so i'm good with either yeah they also as our friend because i posed this question on social media today our friend uh jason fitzgerald you're on social media over the cap uh he said, well, this is why you get you if you are active here, you get these great nuggets. But he mm -hmm. said their cap situation is worse than it looks. And so having the cost controlled players uh, now might benefit them more than later. Um, so, you know, and, you know, one of the things you could think about was also be trading one of, you know, trading a first round pick for a veteran. But like that doesn't seem feasible for them either. So uh, that, you know, a little bit of ammunition to there, like. It's honestly like quite a, a come up for the Eagles, right? Like Sirianni did not look like a good hire. He looks fine now. Um, defense is not all that creative, but they're they're getting the job done against an easy schedule. Um, yeah, it, it'll be an interesting offseason for the Eagles. It, it's so funny how uh, two months ago Miami at one and seven, and was it San Francisco? No, mm -mm. who was the other pick that they had? Uh, Indianapolis. They were all, Indianapolis is 0-3, 1-4. Yeah. Like, it looked like they were going to get t three top 10 picks. Now they're all kind of outside because, like, Miami, Indianapolis, and they have all improved. So it maybe isn't as dire of a situation, uh, you know, as far as, you know, like those first-round picks are not going to be necessarily as, like, valuable. So right, maybe so what they do with them is not going to be as – not going to have as much leverage, let's say. All righty. Let's get into this week before we do. One more reminder, 50% off the greatest Christmas gift that you can possibly give, which is that of knowledge within a PFF Elite subscription um, using promo code ELITEUP. I mean, here's the thing. You can give people knowledge and a way to make their money back. Um, both the NFL and college betting dashboards, also known as Greenline, um, are, are up many units. NFL 27 and college 32, um, which uh, is hard to do this year because like – Remember, the model is not necessarily out there like scouring, you know, like the best time to place a bet. And like, obviously, with all this COVID stuff, um, that is a huge part of it. So um, go take advantage of that. Also, I might mention there are injury reports in the tool. So you can see all the many players that are in the uh, on the COVID list and make your decisions accordingly. And you can get um, the elite subscription for 50% off plus premium stats, plus all of the player grades, uh, promo code elite up. Also, DraftKings, our friends. It is the season of giving, and our friends at DraftKings, they are giving as usual. New customers with promo code PFF bet just $5 on any NFL team playing on Christmas to win. Uh, and you will get 
$150 in free bets if they are victorious. It's not that hard. Um, so go ahead and, and place your bets. There's some Christmas games that I think you could, I think you pick a winner. I think you can do it. And then you get $100, uh, $150 in free bets to use for the rest of the Christmas weekend, which you will need, presumably, to get through um, whatever family gathering you are a part of. So download the sports DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code PFF, bet $5. On any team on Christmas Day, if they win, get $150 in free bets if they are victorious. Um, DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers are the ones that are eligible. Minimum $5 deposit. $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. For gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. We are on to week 16. Where would you like to start in this glorious week where Ugh. who the hell knows who's playing? Well, let's just start with Thursday night. We have your your mm-hmm. four, 49ers on the road. This number, wow, good, thank you, because I don't want to bet it. <laughs> this number has, I got to say, I got to be honest, other than the games we bet Sunday, mm-hmm. I haven't made one bet since Sunday, like since we were in the show. Yeah, it's, I, it's just like, tricky I can't, week. I can't. And like, look, I've been getting closing line value like mad in college football, like for three straight days, and I just keep getting. I had UTSA plus three and a half. It closes two. I get scalded there. I have the under in San Diego State. Boom. I get like a point and a half there. I get crushed. I had Kent State, which might as well have been Bent State because they went out. It went from three and a half <laughs> to three. And I get walloped on that one. I, I This has been a frustrating so week. So you've been trying to feed your family closing line. I, and, and it won't work. It, you it put it on work. the table and it goes away. And, and, and like at least, I'll say this, at least... I hedged a little when Cleveland was plus three because I had some Oakland and they're, mm-hmm. I'm going to keep calling them Oakland because how they won the game the other day over six and a half wins. So that Cleveland plus three, Oakland over six and a half wins, that middle hit, that was the only thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this game opened three and a half. It's now three total on the game. 44. I do kind of like over in this game. Titans defense stinks. Niners defense isn't the greatest thing in the world. I overs have been I've had a rough time of it though this past yeah, week. It's been brutal. And, and but at least if both starting quarterbacks play in this game, I think 44 still is short. And Julio practiced in full today and um I believe AJ Brown is going to be back. So those are two reasons. I would say over 44 is actually one of my favorites. Um and there's a couple reasons for this. The first is let's take a quick gander, which you can do on pff.com, I might add. At the lineups um, that these teams will be trotting out there. And if you look at the 49ers cornerback room, you have um, Mr. Thomas, who has a 28.9 coverage grade. That's not great. You have Mr. Norman, who much better, but not that good either. 52.3 coverage grade. That's 106 out of 120 quarterbacks. That's not great. The Tennessee Titans have not been able to throw to a real receiver in a while. They should be able to here, and they should be able to have some success uh, in that in that area. Also, um, you know, Nick Bosa has been an absolute tear, um, third highest graded um, uh, edge defender in the NFL. I think he's kind of flown under the radar, to be honest. Coming off of an ACL, been impressive as hell. But um, tackles for the Tennessee Titans have been solid. Um, you know, not the greatest in the world, but they're not, they're also not a complete disaster. So I like over there. Um, I'll also say this like the 49ers, their offense, there's, it's been good, right? They're a top 10, uh, sorry, top five offense for us and our opponent adjusted grading. They've been really, really dynamic. All their players are healthy. Another week of Debo. Um, Elijah Mitchell's not playing. Like, who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. They're going to plug Jeff oh. Wilson in there and like, Debo yeah. Samuel run the ball a bunch. It's actually interesting. If you look at props here, I don't know. There are a few that I like. Go to the PFF player props tool and find like there's a ton of them. I think Debo over four and a half receptions at plus 127. He's been rough though on receptions, hasn't he? Because like Yes, but he, but here's the thing. It's, you know, there was an in, there was an injury kind of plunked in the middle there. He's had three straight games before last week of one reception and then four last week. Yes, I understand that, um, but Debo. Uh, but he's I, I don't know I would but fade don't you that look, so I think that the thing to look at though with Debo Samuel's statistics is okay so 
Nine catches, six catches, five catches, eight catches, three catches, seven catches, six catches, five, five, right? They're good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Corresponding to that were his rush attempts, which were zero, two, two, one, one, zero, zero, zero. In the games where he's now had the this five catches, roll, yeah. one catch, one catch, one catch, four catches, his carries have been five, eight, six, eight, six. Like, mm -hmm. Like, I think there's been a fundamental shift of him yeah, from A. Fair. And actually, that's the one thing that Mitchell not playing will impact. They'll they'll play him at um, at running back more. So, pause. Um, I actually think if you can catch it, catch a rush prop over for him, he's had a couple games with 40 or fewer. Mm -hmm. Like, it just takes one for that dude. And, like, to me, I think that might be the better one. But I don't know how many books are offering Debo Samuel rush yards props because they're probably soft. Number. I would think a decent number. Um, you can also get <laughs> my guy Brandon Ayuk at uh, under three and a half receptions, which if you find that plus 113, that is a nice edge. We have that going under um, a significant number of the time, 61% uh, of the time, which means that uh, it's about a 14% edge. So I like that. But I think I like over um, the most in this game. Let's go... Let's go to Christmas Day. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, by the way, the uh, John Madden doc that's airing on Fox before the Browns-Packers game, that better be the greatest hour and a half of television <laughs> the world has ever seen. It, it, it honestly, the only way it's not going to be disappointing is if you have not talked yourself into it because they have decided that this was the best thing that anybody's ever made about football – since the forward pass. I mean, yes. Now, in fairness, it does have John Madden, so there's a chance that it's amazing. Um, I think John Madden's just going to be drawing circles around people's asses again. I mean, that would be funny. <laughs> I'm here for that. I'm actually like, do you know who I really miss watching old games? Pat Summerall. Pat Summerall, was, the, Pat Summerall. was so good. He was like, Aikman, Irvin, touchdown. There's a flag on the play. And I'm like... I, I just I, it takes me back, man. Him him being like half drunk in the booth with John, and just like John drawn like circles, S like ellipses use, around people's butts. No one has made a career as a broadcaster and said fewer words. I think Buck. So people hate Joe Buck. Joe Buck's actually really good in my opinion, and the best part is he's Summerallish in sort of like oh yeah, he's he like Keenum digs. <laughs> He, Touch. <laughs> he does a great job of just like letting it breathe. Yeah. The the thing with the thing, well, the reason, so I still put Al above him, but the re, the the problem with Al is no one else can do Al Michaels. Because mm -hmm. Al just like, just he's, it's like, it's like telling somebody to like, it's like when, um, like why Mike Singletary was such a bad coach. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, you can't teach a, the, a, a guy with the best instincts ever to play middle linebacker to coach Jeff Albrick and how to play linebacker. He just don't, you can't relate. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you can't tell a play by play guy to be Al Michaels. No. Cause the guy's just not going to have the Rolodex that Al Michaels has. And so like the next best thing is it's someone to, that doesn't try is to let, yes. the, let the game breathe. And yeah. that's what Joe Buck and Pat Summerall did best. Yeah, I, I agree. So like Al, yeah, you're, you're dead on. Al has a personality that you can't duplicate, and that's what makes him great. And most of it, it's so unique because 99.9% .9 of people who put their personality on television in that role, people yeah. would retch and scream about. And Joe Buck is just has accepted that that's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you enjoy the experience of the game yeah. without me getting in the way of it. Tariko does a really good job of that as yeah, well. Yeah. Our um, friend Mike, yeah. Our friend Mike. Um, okay, so back to Christmas Day. The Browns and the Packers. By all accounts, Mr. Cheesecake Factory himself will be back for this game. Um, he, by the way, who no? Who he tried that? really hard to test negative. By the way, he really tried hard to test negative. It's so weird that you can't like just try. Just will. Just will, will your way. Not. Who is the Who is the guy who spent all the money at the Cheesecake Factory that was reported last week? I do not follow uh, the same news outlets. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Apparently, uh, uh, so here's an interesting one. So obviously, the Browns just played on on Monday night. Miles Garrett got banged up. He is questionable with a groin. I assume that he is going to grit it out. Oh, Vince Young allegedly spent $5,000 a week at the Cheesecake Factory during his rookie year with the Tennessee Titans, no. which like... No, 
<laughs> you must be kidding me. No, SBNation.com has the. I mean, it's reported by a bunch. A week? Like, is he ordering the whole fucking menu? I know it's big. I know it's a big menu. Granted. Was he bringing the whole team there for dinners? Does it have any. $5,000? Uh, does it have any other information? I, if you tried to spend 5000 on Jeff Ruby's a week, you I could, would struggle. You would struggle. Would and you're struggle. just one man. And you're like. I mean, even if I brought my friends there every day, it would be a struggle. I think this is a life goal for Bake. Don't you think? I'm trying to think That's of That's a thousand like, every weekday, basically. The, math, hashtag math. What's the worst thing <laughs> that you could spend five thousand dollars on every week that's like not illegal? Because I think it might be the Cheesecake Factory. That is the that is the worst use of five thousand dollars I've ever heard. I know. It's like so I would have so much more respect for him if it was like this dude bought five grand worth of weed every week. Like, well, <laughs> Especially because he, I support you. Is especially because you can't get through that much, so he's got to stash somewhere. Like he's stashing it up for later. I mean, he's With obviously the cheesecake bring, factory. That's going bad. You you consumed five thousand dollars worth of stuff. You can't even order nice wine there. What the fuck are you buying <laughs> for five know. grand? Like at least I could go to Ruby's and order like a thousand dollar bottle of wine. I mean, mate, yeah, even that's a, like a crazy thing. Yeah, but, I'll just get seventy five shrimp scampi. By the way, did you hear the the Joe Burrow <laughs> like, hey, there's not much to do in Cincinnati, hence why I haven't gotten COVID. Yeah. I feel like adding Jeff Ruby and being like, challenge accepted? Question mark. I quote tweeted Joe Burrow went up in my book when I saw that QB one QB one baby. That's why you started that the the, the show with. With that take. You just need Justin Herbert to say something super smart, and it's a lot. Joe Burrow gets it. He gets it. When people ask me, what's it like to live in Cincinnati like because of work, I go, it's, it's great because I never have any fear of missing out. There's not one night that I've gone to sleep in Cincinnati and had, man, I wish I did that. Best thing to do in Cincinnati is work, baby. It's a beautiful place. Um, Especially now that sports betting is going to be legal in the state starting exactly, next year. Exactly, exactly. And by the way, I frequent Jeff Ruby's as much as anyone else. It's a fantastic place. People come here. I tell them to go there. I take them there. I don't know how you spend $5,000 in a week somewhere. <laughs> Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory is one of the worst restaurants on planet Earth, by the way. Go to, if you ever go to a Cheesecake Factory, before you walk in, just pull out your phone and Google Chili's and just go to Chili's. Like if you're going to go to a place that gives I haven't you, been to the Cheesecake Factory if, in like if, 10 years. If you're going to go to a place that gives you a legit book for a menu, go to Chili's. Like you'll I actually been, enjoy I haven't been to either one in like 10 years. Chili's is easily the best of the like, this is a chain restaurant that doesn't take itself seriously. Easily. I mean, five. There must be, like, th this must have been. So this, he was a rookie in 06. Was Na Nashville's like a hot spot now? Or is it just not a hot spot back then? I don't know. Okay, we've really we've taken this off the rails. Uh, the, the do you like the Browns plus seven and a half? I don't. Okay, I was going to say. I do not. What I do like. Oh, you're going to tease the pack. Down what I do the like are the Green Bay Packers tease down from seven and a half to one and a half. Okay, okay, okay. You're telling me. You mean you want to tell the me. The Browns are a good team from, te from player 52 on. Yeah. That's great. I mean, look, but without would, would the Packers have covered the Packers didn't cover the teaser leg against Tyler Hundley. Yeah, oh, sure. Tyler Hundley ain't playing in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you Tyler Hundley hasn't spent. If Tyler Hundley was on the Browns, then I would not bet on the Packers right now. Oh God. Okay. All right. No, I, I look. I I agree. All right. Here's one I like. Bucks. Panthers under 44. Hold on. You didn't let me finish my teaser. Oh, you want another leg. I have a Christmas Day teaser. We didn't get we didn't get the teaser last Saturday because of COVID. the freaking game being moved. COVID. Thank you. The Thank COVID. you, Cleveland. Um, our Indianapolis Colts are a one and a half point underdog in Arizona to the Cardinals. The Cardinals have a problem, which is that as soon as you get past like game 10 of the season, they completely shit themselves. And that's what's happening right now. Um, th this to me is a, uh, this is a great matchup for the Colts, especially the way they want to play the game. Um, the Cardinals offense without DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know why we thought that the Cardinals offense without DeAndre Hopkins and Cliff Kingsbury was going to be great. It's not going to be. 
Um, so Colts out to seven and plus seven and a half, Packers down to one and a half. That is the Christmas Day teaser that you've been asking for. You're welcome. Oh man. Um what do you think about it? I don't mind it. I, I do think you better get on that now because it was one in a lot of places. Mm. Um so that so so we do have to uh you do have to be careful there. Um but You're a hater. But yeah, so that that's the only reason. That's why I like moved on because I didn't even think because on on our it depends upon the screen you're looking at. You can get one and a half, sure. Um, and if you can, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, okay, I like Tampa Bay Carolina under forty four. Wow, the Panthers. Wow, offense. you're buying into the garbage that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. I'm buying. I'm selling it. Well, yeah, you're selling the offense. You're buying into them. Stinking. Look, they just signed Le'Veon Bell. I can't think of a, a more under-inducing acquisition than that. They, the Panthers' offense is an absolute joke. Yeah, are you worried about the fact that their defense is also banged up, though? Uh, okay, not with Cam, not with Sam Darnold. So, so Cam and Sam Darnold, forty-four in a revenge game for Tom Brady. Why is it a revenge game? Uh, did you watch him play? I mean, I know I blacked it out of my my memory, but like this is a revenge for like oh, so he's just gonna have ven week. he's just gonna be vengeful. There in is general. vengeance in this game uh, for Tom Brady. Okay, okay. I I don't think so. I'm I'm wow. I like this could be forty one three, and then you get a push. I thirty eight thirty eight three. I just I did the math in my head. There it is. You heard it here first. Forty one three. Box Panthers. I mean, look, the Panthers' offense is horrendous. I, no arguments there. Plus, yeah, forty-four I, in a game with Tom Brady is just a tough one for me. Yeah. Um, let's look at Charlotte Weather. Charlotte Weather sounds like an actress. Um, seventy-five with seven mile per hour winds. So yeah, so, I mean, it's it's fine. Okay. Um, um, I'm gonna okay. get a few texts about like the Charlotte Weather joke, even though it's not that funny. Okay. Um, Okay, you're next. I am next. <sighs> I let, okay. So I have another um, teaser leg that I actually like quite a bit, and that is the Buffalo Bills. They are a two and a half point underdog in New England. Total on the game forty three and a half. Yes, very low total. Um, teased out to eight and a half. Really big game, you know, for the Bills here. Obviously, they were humiliated by the Patriots in that last game. And yep. I am throwing that game out. That was a uniquely weird game. We talked about it. It was a unicorn game. I am not worried about that game um, a, a, having its impact on this game. If, let's say, Eric, that the Bills won that, were they favored in that game by? Was it two and a half, three at close? Uh, the it opened three and a half, Buffalo closed at two and a half. Two and a half. So let's say Buffalo wins by three in that game. Okay. What's the spread on this? Uh, let's pick them. Yeah. Um, so I think you're getting an opportunity to tease here that's really wonderful. And I will add the Buffalo Bills as a teaser leg. If you want one more to go along with it on Sunday, the Baltimore Ravens. They're here in Cincinnati. They're a two and a half point underdog. Total on the game, 45. Total on the game is 45. The Cincinnati Bengals, I love them. I love Joe Burrow. But this is... This is where this is where they are going to falter, right? Yeah. Like this is this not the situation. This game, by the way, is like not on the board in some places because of Lamar. Oh. So you do have to be careful about well, that one. Well, soon, whether it's I actually like the tease with Tyler Huntley too. Yeah, I mean Burrow, the the exact Taylor, like the nothing takes the air out of that stadium, like an early down Joe Mixon run, and there's going to be a lot of them Sunday. Um, here's okay. Here's one I like. Okay, this is probably the last one. Unless I want to get really, really, really awful, bunky with one. Okay. Detroit Atlanta over 42 and a half. Let the anger course through your veins, George, for betting the over in Falcons Niners. And for our Falcons to. God, that made me so mad. It was fucking horrible. Honest, yeah. like, it was awful. And, like, but Detroit. Look, Atlanta's defense is terrible. Mm -hmm. Detroit's defense is terrible. Mm -hmm. Goff is not great. 
Yeah. But he's been playing really well for him. Mm-hmm. Falcons should be able to do that thing. 42 and a half low. Indoors? Now, I know we've bet Falcons overs, and they're the freaking worst. But Okay, but here's the caveat. Who's the Lions quarterback on Sunday? Oh, because he's got COVID-19. Ah. Uh. I think he plays though, doesn't he? I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that, the hard. So, that's, okay, 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 okay. So I did some research. Your own research? Or my just, own research. Okay, good, okay. Good. Now, what do you? When I say my own research, what did I do? I watched Instagram Reels for forty-five minutes with hashtag COVID, and here's what I found. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I didn't fucking do that. I am sort of addicted to like the really high production level uh, cooking reels. Okay. Because 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 here's good. the thing, like you kind of wrecked like, me a little bit publicly it's for being like, like ASMR for being like very the, online, and you are kind of I I was very impressed with your enthusiasm for the F1 race a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now I know you're very into these cooking videos. Yeah, you're just a different level of online than I am. Yeah, there's just different. I I do some different things online. Uh, <laughs> me um anyways there's some good cooking videos out there um good for you anyways what was i even saying i'm completely lost oh yeah my my uh research on COVID. the nfl's new protocols don't make it way easier to get back on the field so you still need if you're vaccinated and you don't have symptoms you still need two negative pcr tests which is a challenge But they introduced uh, the ability for you to have like a measure of the virus in your system that um, is like lower than a certain threshold, which makes me think that they're going to figure out some way to. I actually asked around. I actually asked around about this the other day. Okay, so I'm interested in your take because my take is what the NFL is saying is, hey, we didn't actually we didn't actually make it easier. We made it harder. We added more things for people to have to like check off in order to, and my take on that is bullshit. Um, You're actually adding something that people can have more control over. Getting a PCR test to be negative twice if you've had COVID in the past week is not easy. What are what's your? Yeah, that's the thing is I think there are going to be more players who have symptoms than were, was anticipated mm-hmm. before right. this new thing got instituted. Mm-hmm. So when the when Kansas City had a bunch of of, of them come up came up, I, I asked around. I said, okay, aren't the new protocols in place? Basically, if like if these guys don't have symptoms, then they should be fine. Right. That's not the case. They have symptoms. So a lot of these players have symptoms, and we don't know whether they have symptoms or not when they. Right now, presumably, if Travis test- Kelsey doesn't know. Yeah, but he was he tested positive before Friday, the yeah. changeover. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of the tricky thing. I was under the impression that yesterday we were still in week 15 protocols, mm. but they actually switched them over. Yep. And so everybody who tested positive for the virus within the last couple of days opted in if you're if they're vaccinated. Mm. If if you're vaccinated, you don't have to be tested unless you opt in. And only players who are opt- the only players who are really opting in are ones who have symptoms. So I think that the hard part is that they assumed that the majority of these COVID positives would be asymptomatic, mm. and lowering the restrictions to basically allow asymptomatic players to play would allow for more players to play. The the greasy wheel here, the squeaky wheel, is that some of these players are going to develop symptoms and then. Yeah. You know, like it's going to get worse. Um, yeah, it, it's it's tricky. I don't know. But like, I think it's a good assumption from now on that if a player's vaccinated and he's on the COVID list, that he's symptomatic. That is a good assumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which, which complicates things because then the player not only has to test it's not as it's not as it, what it used to be, which is like Baker Mayfield being like, "I'm trying my best to test negative." It's more yeah. like I actually have to beat this thing and then get back in, yeah. which is which is a little bit longer of a of a road. Okay, I have two. I have two bets left that I like. Okay, they both require you to be a certain level of sick inside. 
one way more than the other. I'll start with the one that's easiest to, to handle. That's Rams Vikings over 49 and a half. The Rams did not score a ton of points, obviously against the Seahawks game was outdoors. This game, or sorry, uh, not outdoors game was indoors in Los Angeles. This game also indoors in Minnesota at Metrodome. Yes. The worrisome thing about the Rams is that they were playing a defense that was not exactly at full strength and wasn't exactly good to begin with in Seattle. And they only put up 20 points. However, I will take advantage of that and say they rebound just perfectly fine against the Vikings, who are not a particularly good defense. Their defense um, is actually horrendous. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and that will require the Vikings to throw the ball indoors. That was the one. They were outdoors in Chicago. They'll be back indoors in Minnesota. 49 and a half over. The Vikings also let the Bears drag them up and down the field on defense. And, and Which, Eric, brings me to my last Oof. Bet I actually like this one. This one. Oh I, yeah, you do. I have a you're that bet. you're that special kind of sick. Yeah. The Chicago Bears are a six and a half point underdog to the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks suck. The Bears suck. Why are the Seahawks favored by three and a half? That's my take. Um, there's the Seattle Seahawks are, are the Seahawks are horrendous. Hopefully. They're terrible. I'll give you some numbers here because I know that that sounds really wimpy. The, the Seahawks are a 22nd power ranked team. The Bears are 25th. So, like, yes, they're both bad. I think the level of bad that the Bears are being ascribed is way more severe than, um, you know, than it is for the Seahawks, which is weird because the Seahawks have been absolutely terrible. Um, but look, the model likes it. I think it's the right side of things. Um, here's, <laughs> here's something interesting. I know it's early in the week. 91% of the cash is on the Seahawks. 73% of the tickets are on the Seahawks. I mean, let me fade all you losers out there. <laughs> okay, here's one. You have another one. I have one more, <sighs> and it's sick. It's gross. Oh, no. It's epically bad. Oh, God. Is it Chinese food in Cincinnati? It's Chinese food in Cincinnati catching strays. Um, okay. Um, you think Skyline is bad. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, not to not to belabor more points. I watched the commercial. I was literally yeah, saying the same thing. I watched the commercial it's and it made worst, me want to throw up in my own it's mouth. It's the worst <laughs> commercial that the world has, has ever, ever created. It is. I really hope it's the same Skyline commercial. So it's family, the one where the, the, the two the little girls are watching the Skyline be produced. And it's like, <laughs> we like to sit at the counter so that my daughters can watch our food being made. And this woman's like slathering uh, like literal feces that was like literally on spaghetti. Growing up in Minnesota, the Mall of America like had the conveyor belt with the Krispy Kreme donuts. Like, right. It was just. Hold like, on. It gets better, though. It gets better. So, this family, these two little girls who they, these poor children must be drugged in order to do this commercial. These two little girls, they bring, the family brings them in. They're sitting at the, at the uh, counter. We get to see our food get made. So, the food gets brought out. And then they start talking about how. It's so great because like we could sit there and be a family and like play with our food. They're like dropping cheese Ugh. in their mouth. <laughs> Can't fuck. I, the the I only saw this the last only night, yes, I, yes. I, I I couldn't do it, man. The, it was the funniest fucking thing. Well, because you were seen. sick to your stomach because you were trying to win that fantasy game. By the way, I won a fantasy league by 0. .08 points. I know. And uh, <laughs> I got like a secondhand like nervousness for even from it, but like. The only sky, the only commercial that's worse, the only commercial that's worse, is the one where the and again respect the troops. When this guy in the military is talking about how great it is that he gets Skyline shipped to his base. Oh no! And I'm just like, and again, like to each their own. But that's got to be so bad. Like that's got to be barely food that is at rough. that point. That is rough. As someone that knows what they serve on. Uh... Like aircraft carriers yeah. and deployment, I can say that no one there is like craving Skyline yeah, chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I will say this: one. I will say this. The Skyline, whoever is doing the marketing for Skyline chili, literally, they're like, um, what's the right? So they're they're like uh, Jason Bourne. They like don't feel yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. don't feel pain. Of course. <laughs> All right, my last one. If you can get this, take the under in Pittsburgh, Kansas City. Is it forty four? Forty four. Pittsburgh's offense is. I picked up the Kansas because you want to hear more about my fantasy team. I picked up the Kansas City defense this week. 
Yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh's like I I refuse to believe that That's Pittsburgh's going to win and score some points at all. The like they continue okay. to defy physics, logic, gravity, everything. Yeah. Now, how many players on? I think that this is an off. Th- this like handicap here is all about the offense for. The Both Chiefs teams, not having right? Players, yeah. Right, the Chiefs potentially being without Kelsey and Hill. What's interesting is if you look at, excuse me, the Chiefs' defense. Chris Jones, COVID nineteen. Rashad Fenton, COVID nineteen. Charvarius Ward, COVID nineteen. So I may be picking up a new defense. Is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, look, offense is the thing that's more stable. They do have at least a relatively deep. Um, secondary so like i don't think it's lock of the week material but i do like where your head's at before we pick the lock of the week if you are looking to uh get a chance for the ultimate game day feast now is this cheesecake factory it could be if that's what you want i don't endorse it but it could be you can enter to win a 2500 hundred dollar catered event for the big game in february february 13th 2022 That means if there's a restaurant near you called the Cheesecake Factory, it could be yours. However, I'll leave that up to you. The way that you enter is by asking Chris Collinsworth a question, which is a cool opportunity to ask him anything you want, anything about Sunday Night Football, anything about his old playing days, whatever it is, or anything about your financial future. Why? Because he's partnering and we're partnering with Western and Southern to make sure that you get the insights you need, not just about football, but also about your own personal finance. Now is one of the best times to make sure that you have that in a good spot so that you can sit back, relax, watch football, and not worry about your financial future. So go to westernsouthern.com slash ask Chris, westernsouthern.com slash ask Chris, ask a question, get entered to win, and then go check out the answer to the best question on Chris Collinsworth's podcast on YouTube or on the Western and Southern Instagram page. Remember, Western and Southern, you can rest assured on game day. Okay. Lock I haven't done a great job the last couple of weeks. No, you have not. So, you have so not. I think it's your turn to, All right. to make proposals here. I've been compared many times uh, because of my giving spirit to the great St. Nick. I thought it was your size. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, that's not it. But you could make that comparison. That's an apt comparison. Um, by the way, the Peloton commercial with like Scrooge riding yeah. the Peloton is really fantastic. Better. They've really pivoted from the buy your wife a Peloton so she can get in shape uh, days. <laughs> <laughs> Real strong pivot. Uh, I like the Christmas Day teaser. I think we make that one. So the Browns, Packers, Packers tease down to one and a half against Cheesecake Factory Mayfield himself. And then the Colts, the renaissance of running the football, teased from a one and a half point dog. Look, to if we a lose this teaser, point dog. it's because the running the football doesn't work anymore. It, that's what it is. Yep. So I like that teaser a lot. Um, I think that's the leader in the clubhouse for me. But what if we did both? What if we did that teaser and then Baltimore? Buff why not? Why not? The alliterative buff bill, buff balt tease. It gives you a little Saturday, a little, a little Sunday. Sunday. What's not to You're like? home by one. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Who's home by one? One Pacific. Oh. I'm on West Coast time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mental state of mind, baby. Um, remember promo code Elite Up for fifty percent off for your oh, Christmas gifts. Oh, recommendations! Yeah, thank God. I know because I got a meeting. Where I like I, I I texted my next meeting. I look. We have four more minutes left for recommendations, okay. so we have so much time we have. Uh, you're up. Okay. So um, hold on. The uh, so the first one, and mm-hmm. this is I'm gonna. I, I'm going to go with with what you're, you know, sort of, uh, you know, you offer like five hundred dollar cologne. Like, oh, I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna step it up. A, it's a not five hundred dollars, by the way. Um, uh, yeah. So, okay, I have two here. The first one is going to be Netflix Bad Sport. Uh, it's a documentary. There's a bunch of them. I only watched the first episode because the first episode is all you need. Mm. It was about the 1994 Arizona State point shaving scandal. It's Ooh. a very fun. I've actually watched it twice because I thought it was wonderful both times. So that was one, you know, if you want to have an uplifting uh, 
uh, documentary watch with your family this week. This week, yeah, it's on sound, Netflix. It's called Bad Sport. Does sound uplifting. The second one, very uplifting. Yeah, I got a hydro and I a, a rowing a, machine. A what? A rowing machine called a hydro. How do you spell that? H y d r o w. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, and so like I love a it. Water rower. Yeah, I love it. Yep, it's great and. Like I've been, so like we moved out a little bit further away. So we haven't been able to go to the Cincy Y as much. Plus the pandemic has been what it is. So like just being able to like being kind of isolated, also not having a lot of good bike paths, like it was time. So I went ahead and got one of these. I think it's worth the money. Okay. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. We'll see. (laughs) Time will tell. Here's the benefit of having it though. You have no excuses now. Play like a champion. Yeah. It was beating inside of you the heart of a champion. Yeah, of okay. I have um, I have some recommendations here. I wanted to give actually a um, exercise recommendation as well because we're heading into the new year and I know people are like trying to come up with, you know, how am I going to like be better here? So I'm going to try and give some actionable things that I've actually used in my life that have been useful. Um, I don't own any equipment. I don't have a Peloton bike. I don't have, you know, any of that bullshit. I refuse. I don't need to, you don't need to spend that much money to, in my opinion, like use the things at the gym to be, to get in shape. Now you can't go to the gym, totally different thing. However, the Peloton workouts, I think are effective. Um, Even if you don't have a bike or you go to a gym, you have a treadmill. I actually like the running workouts. Um, And if you like commit yourself to doing them the right way, they're really freaking it can be really freaking hard especially if you suck at running like me um so that's my first recommendation which is the peloton subscription for the workouts um and the running ones i've done the running ones i've done the biking ones um both hit a cosign for me that is my recommendation for this week now what i will have for next week i will have both a story from my local y which is my gym i have a couple of incredible stories there and I'm going to be cooking, uh, trying some new things out over the next couple of weeks. Okay. And I will have some recommendations based on how that goes. So those are recommendations. We'll see you guys on Sunday night. Merry Christmas. Love y'all.